Welcome to On The Greens. My name is Taribo Bembe. Let's have a look at what this episode has in store for us. On this episode, I got to play the easiest hole at the Usutu Golf Club in Mklambanyatsi with club captain Dean Johnson. In this episode, we also profiled the junior national team on their arrival back from Botswana, where they were taking part in the All Africa Regions Junior Championships. We also have Meshak Zwane as a player profile. Before wasting any further time, let's have a look at what went down at Usutu Hall 14. The Usutu Forest Golf Club's Hall 14 Stroke 18 is relatively the easiest hole to play. Lying deep in the forest, this par 3 plays very easy on the turn as hole 14 on this 9-hole golf course. Measuring just over 100 meters from the tee to the center of the green, mid-short irons or wedges are clubs to select on the 14th tee box. With the Little Mklambanyatsi River running across, offers no challenge whatsoever to your tee shot. Aiming straight for the narrow green eliminates three strategically placed bunkers protecting the green, on right and the back, left and front. With no real trouble to speak of, picking the right club is essential. A fairly flat green that breaks slightly from right to left greets the golfers and should be a great opportunity to make three. Take good advantage of this little gem when you do come play at the Usutu Forest Golf Course. We are at the Usutu Golf Club to play and analyse the easiest hole to play here at Mklambanyatsi. I'm here with club captain Dean Johnson. Dean, welcome to On The Greens. Uh, super, thanks Teriba, thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, once again, um, yes. we did analyse the most difficult hole. That's the right. other time it was winter time, you know, the course was a little bit dry. That's right. Um, now it's summertime, I may say. Yeah. And we had to play um, the stroke, stroke 18. That's hole, right. Hole number 14. That's correct. Yeah, stroke 14, um, short par 3, um, very, very easy hole okay. um, in distance. Um, one or two small challenges on the course. Um, but yeah, in summer, very, very nice. It's nice and lush and green. Okay. Uh, going through some cosmetic changes here on the course, but exciting. All right, what, yeah. what's the distance from the T14 right onto the green? So with the, the new SGA uh, changes, USGA changes yeah. recently that came into effect, we're now measuring from the center of the green, okay. uh, center of the tee box to the center of the green now. So <clears throat> this hole is playing about 125 um, today, um, as a stroke uh, 18 by three. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. About a 125, probably looking at it like an easy 9 iron. Yeah. yeah. Then why why is it easy? Because as we look at the hole, there's actually two bunkers protecting the green, and we also have a, a river right here in front of it. So, well, with the new stroke, short you go into the river, it doesn't become <laughs> easy. Yeah, no, no, definitely. Yeah, with the the with the distance of the hole, the 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 river is about halfway through. So. Yeah, okay. You know, if you're taking your wedge, you can and you hit it, clear you'll it. still yeah. be able to clear it, yes. Okay. The two bunkers, obviously side traps, but you know, if you hit it relatively straight, you should be, you should be fine. All right. Yeah. Okay, let's Good. test the hole. Super. Let's see what we're going to play here. Playing off. <laughs> Do I have to say it on TV? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm off a scratch. <laughs> you're off a scratch. Yeah, wow. Off a scratch. I'm playing off an eight. Okay, that's so, still good enough. Yeah. yeah. So we both not stroking yeah. That's correct, yeah. Alright, so what are you going to make? Um, I'm going to go for a, a solid three. Solid three. A birdie will be a bonus. Okay. I think I'll go for a pie as well. Don't want to we put go. myself under pressure. Wonder, well done. <laughs> Alright, take it away. Your Super. Right. Uh, thank you.
That should be good. Oh, well done. Good yeah. touch. Well done. Thanks. Well, I think we both chipped very well there, close, close to the hole. Um, speaking about the green, I can, from the tee box, you know, what's the advice um, when you really want to land the ball here, depending on where the flag is, um, the hole is? Yeah. I would, I would recommend from the, you know, where the pin is at the moment, yeah. I would rather aim to hit it a little bit centre right. Okay. Um, the green's a lot more even coming in from, from the right hand side towards the pin. Uh, where I'm based here, got a little bit of a right to left. Yeah. So anywhere central, you know, that's always the best advice. Try to go yeah. for the centre of the green. Um, at least give yourself a, an opportunity right. for a putt here. Yeah. And what about the green speeds? So the greens have recently been shaved. So they'll, they'll be a little bit firmer and it'll be a little bit quicker. Okay. Um, there's a bit of rehabilitation on the green, so you might have a little bit of um, side roll, but um, the greens are looking good. But usually throughout the year, how do they play? Uh, they, they play Especially fairly the consistently. Summer, they tend to be a little bit slower, okay. obviously. Winter, they're a little bit quicker, um, especially around the center of the green. But uh, they've got, they got a nice pace. They've yeah. got a nice pace, yeah. I know we just brush through the bunkers as well you know yes. how difficult are they how's the sand they you know right. able to play a good shot out so the sand we've we've loosened up mm -hmm. we've, we're on a nice uh, bunker program so we keep it really relatively soft okay. so it gives the players a nice opportunity to get out of the bunkers so they're very soft yeah oh, awesome um let's put our third shots and see if we can get the pause yeah good luck all right who's first i Have think it's distance. let me Put you under pressure. Okay, there we go. Guess. Take it away. <laughs> oh, there we go. Tricky little one. Very. Well, it's a tie. And it Please. is. But it's both bogus for us. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Um, any other advice, you know, for visitors here at the golf course, you know, to be aware of hole 14, stroke 18, and how to play? Yeah, I think um, if there's any advice, um, the way we've just played it, yeah. <clears throat> you want to try to stay on the green, yeah. away from the bunkers, and then you, you should be able to go down in a three. Mm, okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Super. Thanks, right. Teriba. Appreciate it. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thanks to Dean Johnson for giving us an analysis of Hall 14 at Usutu Golf Club. Coming up next is a golf player profile, our local pro, Meshag Zwan. Let's have a look. My name is Mishak Zwane. I'm a professional golfer. I'm actually a resident pro at Ralph Swazi. I'm a father of three lovely daughters. I started playing golf, uh, 19, active golf, 1996. And um, I became a professional golfer in 2003. The man who's behind all the work is my old man. He introduced me to the sport. And most of the time I'll carry his bag. And sometimes I'll come and help others carry other people's bags. And then we'll play. Uh, the guys I started playing golf with is Raymond Matons. I'm sure you all know him. Ben Lamini, so we actually managed to start the fire from there.
Uh, I'm one of the guys who won most tournaments uh, in the country. I've got 14 tournaments I won because we had our local tour sponsored by Peak Speak. So I was lucky I won 14 of those, but unfortunately we lost the sponsorship. Well, through the golf development, we are training young golfers to become better golfers in the future, even better than us, and also to market the country. Uh, you know, when, we, when they're playing outside the country. So that's our main plan, is to make sure that we market a Swatini. Uh, it becomes a golf a, a tourism a, a, a sort of a country. The golf in the Swatini is growing very well and we're seeing more young people taking up the sport and interestingly uh, also ladies are also taking up the sport so there is a bright future uh, for the country. Well we're saying before you take up the sport it's better you seek uh, training from uh, professional golfers so that they help you and uh, you develop better because most of the time we find that you start the sport without any consultation uh, with, with the professionals and then it delay, you get delayed. So take more lessons with professional golfers so that you actually excel at the end of the day. Well, what we're doing now, we have uh, junior golfers we are recruiting around the country. Uh, Manzini Golf Club, Mbabane Golf Club, uh, Vulama Sang, uh, that's a juvenile school. We're also recruiting young golfers. Uh, Malkens Club, we're also recruiting young golfers. You don't have to be a golfer per se, you just have to be young, between the age of 6 and 18, to be part of the golf development. You just come and register with us and then we'll help you develop the talent and then if we see that you are talented, then we'll actually put you on a special program and develop you. Well, I would love to play more tournaments, uh, uh, like professional tournament uh, uh, events this year, if possible. That will depend on the sponsorship. But again, we're also looking at actually recruiting more kids to be under the development program, that, which is sponsored by Nomads so that we have more active golfers in the future and golfers that will take on the world, especially the young ones. So it's more development than anything else. Thank you. What a noble golfer Meshak Zwane is, good thing is also part of the junior development structures here in Swaziland. Coming up next, we have golf profile of the junior players that travel to Botswana to represent the country in the All Africa Junior Championships. Let's have a look at what went down. My name is Pio Lamini. I'm a 16 year old young man, all the way from Babane, Olojeni. Um, I, I felt really honored to represent the country, um, my country, um, in the All Africa Junior Championships up in Botswana. It is a real pleasure for me to represent my country, and I'm really happy. It was a very awesome experience with my fellow peers, my teammates. Um, yeah, I'm just really happy to have the experience and really rate myself to other golfers out there. My name is Mfundo Ngumalo. I'm currently 16 years of age. I go to Baha'i High School. 
Um, I felt really honored when I was called up for the junior national team. Um, I couldn't have done it without my grandfather and the help of the coach. My name is Tini Somkonda, I'm from Koyoyo. Um, I school at St. Francis High, I am 16 years old. It's quite good to represent the country as a whole. Out of so many people, to get chosen from so many people to represent the country is part of it. So it's I am in Kenya with Lingit. Now, seventeen, and say, Flava nine March. And say, Randall College, a George, Western Cape George. And I feel happy and I'm glad to represent my country. I started playing golf four years ago and I'm happy to progress and within the four years. Awesome. Your experience in Botswana, how was Botswana? It was okay and I played my best. I tried and I think I've never played so well before. In four rounds carrying my bag. It was hard. Especially the last day it was tough and I managed to play better than the last three days. And I was so happy to meet other people there, new friends, countries and the guys, they told me about their countries and how they progress. And okay, you are the top ranked Eswatini player, uh, ranked 30 overall. Yeah. Um, how does that feel? I feel okay. I'm not sad, I'm not that happy, but I'm just okay. Out of all the people who are playing. And I knew some guys that they were way better than us. Yeah. Um, it wasn't, for me, it wasn't a great experience because I didn't produce my best. I feel like I didn't um, help my team, but there's always the next time, as you said. The competition? Um, it was tough. It was tough. The, considering it, it was our first time, we tried our best. The, the countries were really experienced, especially South Africa. They played under par throughout the whole week, so it was tough, yeah. Um, day one, I really played terrible golf. Um, I did not contribute to the team, but second day, I reduced by 10 shots, which was 10 over, 82. Then on the third day, I played really well. I played six over, 78. Then the last day, it was a repeat of the first round, so I wasn't happy with it. Overall score. So the overall experience in terms of lessons, in terms of preparation, what can you do? Um, the coach really helped us with preparations because like every after every round we would go practice, hit balls, have game strategy and plan. Um, I learned that it's not about how hit, how hard you hit the ball but it's about what you make at the end of the hole. Yeah. Thank you. Paul. Thank you so much. Uh, how was the tournament overall, the course, and how did you play? Uh, it was a nice tournament, it was good. I didn't manage to play very well. I tried to play well on the second day where I shot 83. On the first day I played uh, 91. Se second day I shot 83 as I have said before. On the third day, I shot 89, and on the last day, I shot 89 again. So, which day you felt you played well? I played well on the second day. Second day. Yes. Overall, what lessons did you learn from traveling to go play the international tournament? And so on? I learned that I have to practice more and work on my golf a bit more to get better. How was the competition? The competition was really tight. I must say, the competition was tight. Um, but yeah, I tried my best, and I think that's what's important. The course, Pakalani? Pakalani is a very beautiful course, fortunately. Um, 
Yeah, we just tried, but the conditions were very tough as the wind was blowing at a very high speed. But we try, I tried my best handling those conditions, and yeah, I just tried my best. What did you shoot in the four rounds? Um, first day, I played quite well. I shot an 82. Second day, didn't really go as planned. But yeah, I just, I played eight shots um, more than what I played the previous day. Second day, I shot an 80, an 80, I shot an 81. I can't remember but it was an 80, I think it was an 84, 83. Yeah, and then the last day I shot an 82 again. So, Any lesson yeah. overall with the experience? The lesson was to really be patient with myself. I feel like I really put a lot of pressure on myself and I really was looking or expecting the results like now, now, now. So I really think the lesson was just to be patient with myself and just accept the learning process and just get better with time. Thank you so much. Coach, your trip to Botswana, how did it go? Well, I think it went well. We managed to come back in one piece. All right. Tell us about your travelings from Swaziland to Botswana. How did that go? Well, we had to travel by road. Uh, from here, we left on the Sunday to Botswana. Uh, we left at 7 and then we reached Botswana at 5 p.m. Uh, I must say, nothing wrong went bad. So, and then the, the following day, we had to check in. And the following day, we went for a practice round, so we didn't have a day to rest. I think that's another thing we must look at uh, because other teams, they have a space where they, they, they rest because they're traveling, especially us, we're traveling by road. All the other teams were flying in, even Zimbabwe next door flew in, South Africa flew in. Here, yeah, us here in Swaziland, we had to travel by road. And then by the time we got there, the boys were already tired. So. That's the thing. So we went practice on first day and I must say it went well, but again you could see the fatigue was still over the boys because they had to travel a long way. The mood, how was the mood? Well, um, the mood was quite okay. Um, put in mind, it was their first time playing in championships like this, where the entire continent is filling its players. But, um, you could see that they were up for the competition and uh, we just had a few little problems uh, because to, ass to assemble the team it can't be just a weak thing because that's, the, that's one big problem we do in Southern. You see South Africa is preparing for next year, they know the team now, already they are preparing them to make sure next year they go in to win, not just to take part in the, in the event. So after the practice round, coach, um, first day, second day, how did it go? Okay, after the first round, I mean the practice round, we started the next day on the Tuesday. Uh, what I have discovered, like I said, assembling the team in a week's time is just another problem again. They were not playing as, as a team and it was quite difficult to put them together and the, as a result the scores were not so good but you could see that they were trying so came the second day and then they improved by seven shots uh, in the game because I, we had to do a game plan go back to the drawing board and actually work with them and tell them listen you're working as a team 
and this is what is expected. And then obviously looking at their game and helping them out how to score because the golf course, any golf course, you must have a game plan how you score. So I had to sit down with them and I started seeing the scores improving. But the shocking part is the second day again, uh, I mean the third day, of which is the Wednesday, uh, the scores again changed. So from first day to third day, they, it changed by 17, uh, 17 shots. And then second day, uh, it's 10 shots. So you see the difference. The scores, the, uh, the, the scores kept in, uh, improving. And then, obviously, we went to the last day. Actually, we we're seeing better position because we were laying position nine, of which where we ended up. So, but again, like I told you, uh, they sort of got into be dated because they now they changed their tees, the the the, the, the tees to championship tees. So now they started worrying about distance and all that. But again, like I said, uh, it is wise we're going to Egypt next year. The training should start now, not next year. The team, I mean, for the first time they played. We came number nine out of 13 countries. It's a great improvement. Everyone was shocked. They didn't know where Sweden was coming from. And looking at the overall game of the players, they're all good ball strikers. But because uh, they don't get into competitions like this, their uh, management around the greens is, is not very good. And they end up losing so many shots. And that's a problem. But I must say, I'm very pleased. Uh, one of our players, Kanyagwezwe in Tlengetwa, he was um, obviously he's the top player in Southern. He came up with a best, uh, best score out of the four days. And uh, also, he, he was number 30 overall. So it gives you a picture that there is a future in the game. But the problem, like I said before, we're taking sport like a game. This is not a game, this is business. When I start a kid like this to start the sport, he's not looking at it just to pass time. He's thinking of being Tiger Woods. So it's business. And this is one thing that must drum. Uh, I mean, this is a message that must come across to any politician or uh, uh, anyone who is involved in sports. This is business. And also, I, I have noticed one thing in sport. I think I must mention this. People get involved in sports because they want to enhance their uh, political uh, mileage. Th that we must stop. Uh, I, I, I recommend the former sportmen must be the ones who are actually doing development and making sure they look, uh, they, they look after uh, sport people. Because at the end of the day, you find guys who have never been involved in sports, they are in charge. And then what, what next? There is nothing that is going to happen. So we must just look at that. I think as a country, we just need to look at that. That we have people who have a, a, a sporting background. Because as it is now, we just have the wrong people in place. And they don't understand when you talk about development. So that's, in a way, I think, a wrap up like that. Thank you. Thank you. Well done to the junior national team. I think they represented the country very well. Ninth place out of 16 countries, not so bad. Coming up next is local highlights. Highlights that include Nobuhle Lamini's first Sunshine Ladies Tour win. Let's have a look at what went down. The 2019 Sunshine Tour Dimension Data Tournament witnessed our very own lady golfer Nobuhle Lamini grab her third win of the tour. With South Africa's Monique Smith and Bertine Faber leading the pack in the first two days, Smith gave the local crowd reason to cheer with a birdie start. Partnering with amateur Francis Tremine to victory in the Better Ball Team competition, Nobutla dominated in George. On a tense and dramatic Sunday at Fancourt Golf Club, Nobuhle played her second on the green.
Then she drained a 32-foot uphill birdie putt at the final hole. Sealing a Sunshine Ladies Tour hat trick with a two-shot victory in the Dimension Data Challenge. It feels good. Um, I feel like I'm back where I belong. Um, I'm playing really well and I'm going to keep going in the direction that I'm headed at right now. Nomad's camaraderie and purpose is built on a spirit of giving. Right before their end of year golf activities, the organization made a donation to the Juniors National that traveled to compete in the All Africa Games in Botswana. Golf became the order of the day. With Nomads Golf, scoring isn't easy as players' current club handicaps are adjusted in accordance, with the format being an individual medal series. With a four ball at the 17th hole, Lamuli Malo, Victor Masilela, Steve, and Lance Rousseau. The daunting 17th proved to be a little challenge for this group. Lamuli clearing the water hazard with a well struck wedge iron. Pastor Victor Masilela found the drink to his amazement, took a drop, and played a good shot close to the green. Steve flew his wedge right onto the edge of the green. A fist pump from Lamuli to credit his good play. Lance Rousseau was next. Easy does it. Lands it just over the pin. Right on the fringe, Masilela fails to get it close to the hole. Soft hands, I guess. Steve chips well and almost holds it with the right club. Rousseau reads his putt from 10 foot and leaves him an easy tap in for par at this par 5. Steve for par, sinks it on the right edge. Last to putt is Mlamuli. Oops, lips out. With the day's proceedings ending well for some of the nomads on the 18th, it was time to refresh and head up to the banqueting hall for prize giving. The biggest trophy to be won was the Gary Player Knockout, Obi Matwele and Sandilis in Milan. The winners this year are Obi Matwele and Sandilis in Milan. The highlight of the event was the captaincy handover, with Martin Lichka taking the jacket for 2019 and 2020 Nomad season. Martin then announced the Nomad's incoming committee notable names, being Franz Strauss as vice captain, Veli Lulu as secretary, and Theo Masson, Nomad Eswatin Nationals organizer. A successful year end for the Nomads and the beginning of another new era. The Mbabane Golf Club hosted its monthly mug with a well-attended field. Amongst the players was Bethuli Lomo, former Mbabane Swallows player Cosmo Mtetwa, 
EEC Man Vusi Gama and Steven Mavuso. All played a competitive round, but the ESRIC monthly mug winner for March was Boniso Mkwanazi, taking home both the Gross and Net trophies playing 4 under. Gross and Net 68. He followed up with a third trophy in two weeks by winning the Mbabane Club Championship. Best gross on 69 was Vusi Lamini. Defending champion Nicolas Villaradi came second on net 69, one shy on matching Kwanazi's 68. Five players tied on 71 net. Coming third on 71 net was Valentine Mazia, and last of the five players was Gordon Bennett. We caught up with the Golf Society touring the Kingdom of Eswatini in celebrating their 50th of existence as a society from the Durban Country Club. Loving the sunshine and enjoying a round of golf at the Royal Swazi Golf Club. We hear from them. We are a group in the Golf Society from Durban Country Club and, and we are celebrating our 50th anniversary this year. So we just decided come to Swaziland as, as part of our celebrations. Uh, in the days, early days, um, Divitz used to tour regularly uh, to, to Swaziland, so we, we just tried to re, re, uh, re, uh, reignite the, that part of the Divitz tour. We go on, on tour twice a year, so uh, we decided to, to come to Swaziland as part of our celebrations. Awesome. How long are you in the country? We are for three nights. Yeah. How many golf courses are you doing? We played Leopard Creek, um, we played there twice and now we uh, played uh, twice and then we're going tomorrow. Congratulations once again to our golfer representing us very well in South Africa, Nobushe Lamini. Coming up next is local rules and tips by Romero Matos, including the double hit that I've just done here. Let's have a look. We're here once again with um, Eswatini Pro, Ray Matonsi, who is now becoming our resident rules and um, tip professional. Ray, welcome to On The Grid. Uh, thank you. Thanks for having me over for the second edition of the final event. <laughs> Alright, I see. So, what, what do we have to do? I know we have, last episode we discussed a few of the new 2019 rules. This episode, we adding more of the rules because there are a lot, you know, but there are about 20 key rules. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Um, the, the trick is always to try and uh, upgrade your knowledge on these rules, uh, refresh, because it's uh, very, very easy to mess up the new rules with the, with the old rules. Yeah. So, um, there are quite a few rules you want us to, to discuss today. It's definitely, yeah. The first one, I think, is a plug ball. Um, a plug ball through the green. I think you should look up the term through the green. Okay. Through the green is fairway. Mm -hmm. green. Um, the immediate rough, not the bush. That's okay. through the green. So if your ball is plugged in the rough, like this rough over here, okay. Uh, let's get a little ball here. Let's try and plug it on purpose. Alright. So if your ball is plugged, it means your ball has is embedded in its own pitch mark. So what you then do is, first you have to um, alert your playing partners okay. that your ball it's has ground. broken the ground and stayed in its own pitch mark. That's what a plug ball is. If there is any argument to it, like if there is, uh, the rough is a little bit thicker, you may actually mark the ball. Okay, you can use this club to mark. So see if there is a hole where it is. The On ball, the ground, when the ball, when the ball is flat, it's when it has broken the ground and stayed in the same mark where it broke. So, anywhere in the course? Anywhere on the golf course except the big bush. So, now, if the ball is sitting like this, you mark it, preferably with a peg, mm -hmm. and then you drop it as close to the point at which it is flat as possible. Okay. 
it is not a one club length relief. That's where a lot of people make a mistake. They feel like because you've got a drop, you can then work our way from the No. It is as close to this point in which it plugged as possible. So you are allowed to clean the ball and remember, knee high, mm -hmm. then you can drop it. If it rolls back in, into the plug line, you go again, you drop it, and that now ball is now in play. Yes. Once the ball comes to rest, it is now in play. If you touch it again, you start adding up your score. Penalties. Okay, so right. that's that's how you deal with the plug line. The plug line, when you come up to this situation, you have to first you have to mark the ball, the position of the ball. You can use a club, you can use a peg. So I'm gonna use a club just to make sure that the ball is plugged. I need to see if it has broken the ground. And when you pick up pick this ball up, you can see there's mud on it, which means it has broken the ground, and you can see this little crater here that it has. So, you then put a peg as close as possible, or I can leave this club here, and I'm allowed to wipe the ball clean, okay, or the caddy can do it, and then you drop it as close to the point where it was plugged as possible. That ball is now in play. You may not move the ball I mean, you may not place, uh, uh, use a club length uh, free drop or whatnot. You have to drop as close to this point as possible. So this ball is now in play. The only way you need to move this ball is by a club. If you touch it, if you if you pick it up again, it is now a strong penalty. Um, okay. So this is another rule that has changed in golf. Yeah, you just hit me with the ball. Since you are caddying for me, since you are caddying for me, you are part of my equipment. Okay. So, where it used to be a penalty, now it isn't. It's just the only thing that has changed that is still there. You get the penalty if you take your equipment and put it at such an angle that if you hit it, it will help you. Give you an advantage. An yeah. advantage, yes. So if you went and put your your club behind the flag, and then you chip the ball, it hits um, the club behind it to stop the ball uh, from going further on. Mm -hmm. Then it's a penalty. But under the new rules, if you hit your caddy or your equipment by mistake, it is no longer a penalty. All right. So, so it's just you play the ball from wherever it comes to rest. Does a, a golf cart count as equipment as well? Yes, the golf cart counts as part of the equipment. So even if you do end up miscuing a shot and hitting your golf cart, because they, they normally park way off line, but you never know. If you hit it, it's mm -hmm. no longer a penalty. Okay. You just play the ball as is. As is. So if you hit your equipment and go into the water, now you have to play under the correct rule. Okay. All right. Let's move along to search time. Search time. This is the bit where you shouldn't be searching for too long. Try and stay on the fairway. But if you have to search, yeah. you have to understand two things about search time. First, it went from five minutes yeah. down to three minutes. Now, the crucial question is when does it begin? Yes. Your search time begins when your caddy starts looking for the ball. Not when you get to the ball. All right. So you are kind of lucky if you don't have a caddy because you need to get to the area where the ball might be then they can start timing you, you know, the rules official can start timing you from that point on. But if your caddy moves on ahead and starts looking for the ball while other players are maybe still teeing off, yeah. the three minutes will elapse before you even get to your caddy. Okay. So if the rules official is really strict, he will time the caddy when he starts looking for the ball and by the time you get there, your three minutes are up and you have to go back and uh, play another ball from where you last played your last shot. Okay, yeah, at the Swatin, normally we don't have rules officials, you know, roving around the course. You know, who does the timing, let's say, on your four ball? Is it the marker? Is it the other group? Um, it's a very good question in that not too many people um, are brave enough to call those kind of things on other players. But your marker is the one that should actually, first of all, he has to. 
he it, it's if he's going to act rules official for that rule, he has to alert you when he is starting to time you. He can't just come and say if your three minutes are over without saying, I'm now timing your search time. So he has to time your search time, but your marker is the one, the correct guy, to tell you that you've gone over your time limit. Alright. So this is another version of a plug bowl. When it's plugged in the sand, in the bunker, now you don't get relief. If you want to take it out from there, you can take it out for a shot. You can drop it in inside the bunker mm -hmm. or drop it outside of the bunker um, under the correct rule. You get, I think it's two shots or something, but you take you can take it out physically if you don't if you're too scared of this. Or if you want to drop it in the bunker, it's a shot. So here we go. For pros, this is not a problem. Because it's a very simple way to play the shot. You you actually hit where the crater starts and just make a vertical chop, the ball pops out. Mm -hmm. However, it's not about that. The rule is if it's plugged in the bunker, you play it as it lies. No so relief whatsoever. There is no relief. If you are plugged in the rough, if you are plugged on the fairway, because there's placing, you don't have a problem there. If, if it's plugged anywhere through the green, you are fine. You can, but through the green does not include the bunker. So, this you play as it lies. The other plug lie, you may drop free drop. Awesome. It's that simple. Thank you. Um, thank you, Ray, for the analysis of the rules once again. Um, hopefully, next episode will bring us more of um, the rules that the golfers need to know. It's a pleasure, Taribo. Um, I think the trick is not to, f to fall foul of the rules. But we, we've all done it at some point, and when, when you do, you should know how to proceed without really getting upset over it. Because when you know what the correct rule is, um, when your marker tells you what the rule is, you won't get upset. Yeah. But uh, a lot of golfers then think it's personal. But otherwise, keep practicing, get better, then you won't need rules. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, Dan, who is the Minister of Sports and Culture in I would say Mr. Dlamini. Minister of Sports, are you sure? Uh, not, not entirely, but that's a guess. Mr. Then, who's the Minister of Sports? Minister of Sports? Sure. I was only talking about it the other day as well. Oh, you caught me nicely now. <laughs> no, I can't remember either. Can't remember either. No. Who's the Minister of Sports? Um, he's a former session player. I think he is, uh, his name is uh, Harris Matagulu. Correct. Okay. Who is the Minister of Sports? I have Max. Uh, it's just Max. I just know the name. Just know the name. Blue. Okay. How many bunkers does the Osutu cause? 54. Sure. That's a guess. But I'm pretty certain 54. How many bunkers does the suit to have? It has. Hmm, question. Uh, Can you have an answer, please? I'd say about 21. 21? Hmm. Are you sure? I'm, I'm near perfect. You want to count again? Okay? 21. I'll stick to 21. Stick to 21. Hmm. All right. Um, I know you're playing Babani very well. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. How many bunkers does Babani have? Um, let me see. Two. Let me say eight. Are you sure? Not quite. Seven, seven, seven. Seven bunkers. Seven bunkers. Okay. How many bunkers are there in this course? Babani Golf Course. Mm. I need to count them. I can give you thirty seconds. Okay. Thirty seconds is up. Can you have a number, please? Um, there are nine. Nine bunkers? I think so. Are you sure? Yeah. Ah, uh, no, no, ten. Ten bunkers. Ten bunkers. The river that runs through the golf course in Osutu, what is its name? The Osutu River. How long do you think the Osutu River is? It runs all the way down to Lopotlo, so it must be a couple of kilometers, maybe about 10, 12 kilometers long. Ten maybe, kilometers. yeah. Definite. No. A definite.
Let's go 18 kilometers. The river that runs through the course, what's the name of that river? I haven't a clue. Are you sure? I'm sure I haven't a clue about that. Mm, not sure. No. The river that runs through the course, what's the name of the river? I think it's probably not. Are you sure? I love to check that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, Mr. Gold. Thank you. All right, thanks. Bye. The river that runs through the Mabane course, what's the name of it? It's called Mabane River. Are you sure? <laughs> no, no, I'm not sure. Um, but it's in Baban, so technically I should be Mabane River. How many questions do you think you've got right? I think one out of three. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> thanks for the time. <laughs> Super, thanks to River. How many do you think you got right? Just one. Just one. Mm. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Terry. Right. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Ray. Once again. Thanks, Terry. Mm -hmm. Please do the honors and close the show for us. Please do catch us again on uh, Swazi TV every Saturday at 4:30 p.m. Or you could uh, also catch us on YouTube, Swazi TV Sports, or Instagram um, on the Greens. Until we meet again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.